Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Daniel Choi here from North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth and Denture Implant Center. And I wanted to answer a very common question that patients have. What is with the cost of all on four and why do I see such varying, like different costs, like dramatically different costs when I go do my research online? Um, well, before I answer that question, hopefully you guys can find this information to be helpful for you guys. And if you do, if you could give me my channel a follow and also give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk about all on four costs. You know, just letting you know right from the get go, all on four um, definitely when we're placing dental implants, all the little individual parts and the cost of the prosthesis. Um, there's so many different options in regards to like, like you know, when you're truly getting an all on four that a lot of patients have confusion about. So um, again, hopefully I can address a lot of these questions. First thing I want to say right off the bat, when you're doing research online and you see those Google ads. I'd like to say beware the bait and switching that occurs in these online advertisements because you will see many dentists advertise an insanely low price, but upon evaluating a patient for a consultation, they'll nickel and dime you for basically different necessities of the procedures or take shortcuts, use cheaper materials. Um, not everyone, I don't want to make a blanket statement, not everyone does this, but it is a common technique that I've seen when I've done research on the competition. So. Um, I've talked to patients that have gone in for other consultations, had their procedures done at some other clinics, and basically there is a way that some of these offices are going to try to offer, um, you know, cheaper options, but definitely are not going to be in the um, long-term benefit for the patient. So, um, quick example, um, here at North Texas Dental Surgery, what we do is for your final prosthesis, we only offer zirconia. Um, zirconia is a material which is insanely resistant to breakage. Um, also, it doesn't want to stain, um, attract bacteria, which compared to an acrylic prosthesis where the teeth can break off um, or stain and just essentially your prosthesis couldn't like crack in half or something like that. Um, we just consider it such a disservice to our patients that we don't even like offer that as an option. Um, if you decide to do a prosthesis with us, um, we know that it's going to be in your best interest because you are making such an investment in your prosthesis for your mouth that we're only going to give you the option of zirconia for your final prosthesis because we don't want you to be on vacation um, or six months or a year or two years from now have a tooth break, tooth break off when you have a meeting the next day or you're going on vacation or in the middle of something or maybe you're just living your normal life. You don't want to keep on going into your dentist to um, take this prosthesis off of you um, and to spend a few hours to um, immediately, you know, put this tooth or fix your prosthesis and then send you on your way again. Um, we just make sure that you're going to leave with a zirconia prosthesis, which is again much more resistant to having these issues. So again, um, I would be a little bit of aware of a center that um, will offer you only the converted denture. So what am I really talking about? I want to use the example of one of my patients that we took out his upper teeth. He was not really happy about his upper teeth um, when he smiled. And so and he had a partial denture at that time, um, a root canal and crown that was going bad. And so what we did is we took out his teeth, we placed these implants, and that same day, this is his converted prosthesis that he's walking out with teeth that day. Well, what some uh, clinics do is that they will, you know, quote you a, a low price. They'll say something like, you know, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars, and you'll leave looking with like, you know, like this, and have teeth to function with. But unfortunately, a converted prosthesis that's made out of acrylic or plastic, um, when this guy goes home and he bites on something, he chews on something, inevitably, what can happen is the tooth breaks off, or the prosthesis starts staining. Um, so these are issues that can start developing, whether it's two months down the road or six months or nine months down the road. The converted, the converted prosthesis is not meant to be a long-term prosthesis. Also, behind the scenes, underneath this prosthesis, what can happen is the bone starts changing shape um, during that first four or five months after the surgery. You can get all this food trapping in there and the bacteria. So it is essential for that patient to be in that final prosthesis, that zirconia prosthesis later on down the road. Um, you know, again, the, the normal protocol is to do that procedure where we take the teeth out, place the implants, put them in that converted prosthesis, which you saw in that picture, but you then wait four to five months to make sure all the implants are healing properly, that the bone has remodeled properly because the bone's gonna have some shrinkage. Also, the gums are gonna have some shrinkage and remodeling. And then we begin the process of doing the final impressions to make sure that that patient has that 
that really form-fitting prosthesis in the end. I give my patients this example. Imagine that you were to have a prosthesis uh, uh, or an orthotic, a foot, like a shoe that you were to have for the rest of your life. Um, the soles don't wear out or anything like that. Now, would you ever have a surgery and your foot is going to be very swollen and then you go see your podiatrist and then they're going to get a custom mold of your foot and then they're going to make you wear this foot, um, the shoe for the rest of your life. No, because if your foot was really swollen after the surgery, your foot's going to eventually not be so swollen maybe like a month later. And so if you were to wear that shoe later on down the road, your foot would be swimming in it. So what you would want to do is wait during that necessary period of time, wait for your foot to stop being so swollen and then get that custom made, you know, fit for your foot so that you can wear that shoe for the rest of your life without, again, your foot, like, you know, like swimming in that and you want it like, you know, fitting like a glove, right? So that's essentially why uh, we have to wait that period of time. So, you know, any, you know, all on four prosthesis that we're going to fit that day is just, you know, I know it might look nice, but you're going to have a whole host of issues down the road. So again, my point with regards to cost is just really be careful about the bait and switching that you see online because people will give you this converted prosthesis and won't give you the final zirconia prosthesis. Or maybe they'll mention like a hybrid, which is a titanium bar with the acrylic baked on there, which also is an inferior option compared to the zirconia prosthesis. Along those lines, um, an office that claims to have a single price, fixed price, without even looking at your 3D scan um, or like assessing to assess your mouth and bone um, because everybody's mouth and bone is different which really impacts the complexity of your case. Here's an example where I had a patient come by for a consultation today um, interested whether and maybe she wants to do an all on four procedure or maybe she wants to do um, a snap on denture. So I had to have this 3D scan to kind of like let her know what her options were to let her know Hey, how difficult is this case? What expectations that she should have? And also, um, realistically, how does the cost come into play? Well, this case was actually a very complicated pro procedure because she was giving us a history of a, you know, having what we call an impacted canine that she's had for her whole life. And what this 3D scan was really able to tell me was this extent of this infection that was occurring uh, right behind her front teeth and how that would really complicate our ability to place implants because that might alter her need for um, zygomatic implants, carigoid implants, um, sinus lifting, um, any like you know additional bone grafting that may be necessary. Um, I haven't seen a case like this in a really long time, but this 3D scan really um, clued me in on the level of infection that she had. So this was able to um, this way I'm really able to give um, an accurate estimate to the patient. And then conversely, there's a, another scan of another patient that we did dual large all on four on. And when I look at this, patient has severe periodontal disease. The teeth are easy to come out. I can see the location of the sinuses. Um, I see an abundant amount of bone. I can see where all the nerves are. And so what we were able to do with this patient was that this case was gonna be a lot easier and didn't really have the severe complexities that other patient had. So we were able to give quite a bit more of a discount for this patient versus the other. So, Really the bottom line is that we need to have that 3D scan. Like what I need to do is like every time we have an all in four consult or a snap on denture consult, when we're talking about cost, uh, we do bundle our costs, but really those are contingent on how complex those cases are. Um, we are going in some of these cases, we're placing eight implants, some patients we're placing 12 implants or 14 implants, well not 14, well 12 implants. But really those are some of the factors that like impact the cost. So. My bottom line is that if you are getting like a, an estimate over the phone without them even looking at your case, um, that to me is a little bit of a warning sign. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Um, I kind of went over this a little bit, but what are some of the variables that can affect the cost of an all-out four? Okay, so how much bone you have. Um, in that example that I told you previously, that I showed you previously, um, that first 3D scan, um, you know, that patient definitely had a deficiency of bone due to the level of infection. But, um, you know, we can have a deficiency of bone due to age, um, genetics. Um, so it can be one of the most complicating factors with an all on four. Um, the more bone you have, definitely the more predictable the result. Um, and also not only just the amount of bone you have, but like what's the quality of the bone. Some people have nice dense bone. It's like, uh, it's like concrete. Other people have just really porous bone and that can be like 
um, drywall. So if something like that, imagine I'm going to go out and um, I'm going to hang up a 200 pound painting on the wall. We better make sure that we're in those studs, right? Um, we can't, you know, just go into the drywall. And if I was to go into the drywall and I was to hang up a heavy painting, maybe not 200 pounds, but I need to definitely place uh, more screws in the wall and in essence that's the same thing with dental implants if we do have a patient that has uh, more porous bone than what we're going to do during the midst of the surgery um, I'm going to actually go ahead and feel, feel more comfortable by having redundancy and placing more implants so um, basically there might be a higher associated cost with that some people you will see that they will charge you a little bit more um, to the procedure if you need to have more teeth extracted um, for most people, that's a non-factor. Um, at our office, we don't charge you anymore if you need to get more teeth extracted versus less. Um, how many implants will you be, uh, need to be placed? I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, in each jaw, four implants are the minimum number of implants. That's why they call it the all-on-four. Um, more can be placed to provide redundancy, so you have less force per implant. Um, also, like if you place more implants, it's like having insurance, right? So God forbid, it's really rare for you to lose a dental implant, but if you were to lose a dental implant, if you have another one in a similar area, um, you really don't ever have to worry about that. You know, the surgeon can maybe treat that area or maybe you, if worst case scenario, you were to lose that implant. Um, I saw a patient um, about several months ago who had an all on four prosthesis placed um, I think she said about 10 years ago in Houston. Um, she mentioned that her surgeon had passed away, but this patient came into me, she found me online, she had significant infection on two of the dental implants, um, but she actually had five dental implants. And even though she lost two of them due to the location where they were, and she had some redundancy, and it also because it was her lower jaw, which the lower jaw bone is a lot more dense, she was actually still able to function even though she lost those two implants. Um, and you know the reason why she lost those two implants is um, I wish someone had really stressed to her earlier that, you know, you need to get this prosthesis cleaned, but for 10 years, she never had the prosthesis cleaned. So unfortunately, she lost two of those implants. And also, I mentioned this earlier, the big thing is making sure that um, you have the right final prosthesis. Um, here at North Texas Dental Surgery, we only do a final prosthesis in zirconia. Yes, it costs us more money, um, but what we did was we just brought it down at a discount at the same cost of a hybrid, which is a titanium bar with the acrylic. Um, we feel that any option, which is gonna be just the acrylic teeth, um, is going to fail at some point. The teeth are gonna, you know, these are plastic, right? So this will grind down over time. Um, the teeth can become stained when you drink or, you know, like if you had a glass of wine or coffee, when your teeth will start staining over time. Imagine that beautiful white teeth that you had originally. Um, six months, a year down the road, um, the teeth start wearing down and they start becoming stained and you see the bacteria on there. So that's definitely um, why you can see variation between dental, different dental clinics um, in regards to some of the differences of like the costs. You know, uh, one quote that you might get in another office is because, well, what are you quoting me for like, if I do like get all the bells and whistles, if I get that final zirconia prosthesis. Um, versus the cost that, you know, again, I don't offer it because I really think that it's an inferior option to offer a converter prosthesis. Um, that's just acrylic that um, we deliver the day of surgery that we never touch and I expect you to wear that for the future. That it's, it's not gonna function properly. Again, you're gonna have teeth that break off. Your prosthesis can break in half. Um, you're gonna develop large gaps underneath. These are just some of the things that I've seen patients get frustrated with. So we don't even offer that option. Um, so again, that is also a big factor that you're going to see in regards to the pricing differences that you're going to do, that you're going to see. Uh, what are some of my tips for you guys in regards to like when we're looking for pricing? Honestly, it, it helps to go in for multiple consultations. Um, go and speak to them and like now that we give you a little information, you can ask, well, what is my final prosthesis going to be? You know, let me know about some of the timing. Is it going to be a zirconia prosthesis? How many dental implants do you think that you're going to need to place in me? So um, also like sedation, am I going to get um, oral sedation with a few pills? Am I going to get IV sedation where I can comfortably go to sleep and not remember anything? Um, am I going to get sedated at all? These are different like things that can come into question and these are some of the things that you should probably ask. Um, your surgeon in regards to doing the all on four prosthesis. 
Um, in general, again, like if you're looking for what the cost can be, it really differs. Um, are you living out in the country? Uh, do you have dental insurance? Because insurance can at least help you out a little bit with the extractions. Um, what part of the country are you living in? Are you living in New York City? Are you living in Dallas? Are you living in Oklahoma or like, you know, Ohio, where I'm originally from? So all these factors can really um, impact um, the cost of having an all-out for us. So hopefully you guys found this information to be helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We always offer complimentary consultations and we're more than willing to help you guys with this big decision you guys need to make in your life. Thanks and look forward to seeing you.